What's up, y'all? This is Ty. How you doing? You know what I'm here for. I am here. I'm back. I know it's. I know I was supposed to have this up by Wednesday, but what had happened? Let me explain to y'all. I was also reviewing and recording um, Greenleaf, which is back. Shout out to all my Greenleafers. And um, then I said, I'm gonna call, okay, let me go ahead and do this. Um, oval thing and I you know what happened a brother fell asleep right there on the couch and I didn't get to record next you know it was Thursday and now here it is Friday but here I'm finally here now getting this review done so here I am to review episode 20 of Tyler Perry's comedy the oval on BET but before I do that let me get my shout outs in for the people that always make comments down in the comment section. I think we have a new subscriber also, Deneen. Thank you, Deneen, for subscribing. Um, there's any other subscribers. You know, sometimes YouTube doesn't let me know. Thank you for subscribing. I do appreciate it. Shout outs to June BLC. Um, you need to check her out. She's a new YouTuber who has videos on about church chat and also about gardening really good stuff over there so check that out uh francesca francesca richardson simply be yourself 100 db deshaun jenkins malika rc kroger randall brown jasmine washington tia divine is another one tia divine is someone who um is also a youtuber and she does reviews on the shy and she also reviews the oval so check her out when you get a chance and did i say db db let's give db a shout out a teeth penny the list goes on i hope i didn't forget anybody but i love you all anyway so now let's get right into it last week's episode we know that there were drones over the white house so now the secret service had to come in and make sure everything was okay and he had to make sure that the president and his family was safe so they put them down in bunkers as they swept the place and while sweeping the place they had to go into the president's bedroom and look under the rug because where else will there be danger if i don't check under a rug and that's how max found <laughs> The blood. I'm like, who are you looking for? Who, who's, who's, who's under there? Who's under the rug? A Smurf? I mean, come on. But you know what? I have to give credit. I believe that was either Deshaun Jenkins or Randall Brown who, who mentioned that, saying, like, why would you be looking under a rug? So shout outs to them. One of them said that in the comment section last week. And I have to agree. That was funny. But anyway, Max also decides to look at the... Um, carpet not the carpet at the mattress which is in the box and he sees all this blood and guess who's back y'all uma is it uma or yuma yuma yuma's back and he's telling her listen all this blood on this mattress there's no way this person survived there is no way that this person survived we need to dig deep and look deep and investigate this and Yuma's like, listen, this is listen, this is the president's stuff. This is a big deal. Mind your business. Stop trying to play Columbo. Stop trying to play Matlock. Stop it. This ain't murder, she wrote. It's mind your business. But you know, he wants to push this issue. And she's like, listen, I put it down. Let's mind our business. Let's not deal with this. But you know, Max wants to go further with this. Also, in this episode, we see that. The first lady, the first lady was bugging in this episode. She was coming on strong to Sam because, you know, she was in the bunker with Sam and he loaned her his coat and she's flirting with him. And, you know, she put his jacket back on him and asked him, oh, do you work out? And she grabbed his shoulders. You know, that happens to me all the time, too. You know, the women always grab my, you see all this. They always grab my shoulder and say, oh, you, you must work out. And I'd be like, yes, I do, baby. <laughs> but anyway, she's laying it on. And she's, she's a pretty woman. So she's laying it on him. And he wasn't paying that no mind. And she just was just flirting, flirting, flirting. His wife smelled the uh, her perfume on him. And she let him know, listen, because I don't care if she's the first lady or not. I'll cut her, you know what, cut him up. And so the first lady was even picking 
with her. Because then she started asking her all these questions about her marriage and, you know, your husband. She's playing games because she said something like, oh, yeah, your husband let me loan me his coat. Well, she didn't call him her husband. She said, he loaned me his coat. And what do you know about him? And oh, she was playing games. She's trying to be funny. The girl and told you last time that that was her husband. And she said, like I told you before, that's my husband. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then she started asking her these stupid questions like, does he cheat? And all of this really pushing buttons. And you could tell homegirl wanted to smack her, but she was being reserved. But this is where she messed up. She was telling a little bit too much of her business when she decided to share with uh, the first lady that she ain't getting a lot of action at home. So you know the first lady is going to play on this. And yeah, that, that wasn't smart. And I'm going to have to agree with Tia Devine on that because she said that in her review too. Like, why would you be telling all that information? Not smart at all. Um... What else happened in this episode? These, um, Sharon, Sharon and the pharmacist, you know, we still wait for this window to get fixed so he can get back in business or whatever. Everybody's paying Sharon a visit, the detective or whatever he is. He, no, Sam, it was Sam actually, sorry, paid her a visit trying to tell her, listen, can you kind of persuade the pharmacist to drop his charges against Barry and he's also asking her you know why did you um sleep with this dude you know come on what was that about getting all up in her business I thought that was funny and also Barry's mother did the same thing when Sharon called her to check on Barry's father now she was giving her total attitude being totally rude to Sharon and then I guess she regretted it after she learned from her husband that um, it was that med school student that kind of helped save his life before the paramedics got there. So Sharon apparently helped save Barry's father's life. You know, okay, whatever. Um, what else did I notice in this episode? Let me go to my notes here. Max makes a very foolish mistake to me by letting Kyle know that he's on to him that something happened to Denise's pieces. And he's like, listen, I know something happened over here. You had, you know, I know something's going on. And Kyle pretty much told him, listen, this ain't what you want. Mind your business. You're going to get dealt with. You're going to get hurt. Now, you see, this is when you're supposed to fall back. Because now you're going to really get yourself. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. But, you know, I'm like I'm saying, I don't know what's, what it is with Max. Max want to keep this thing going. He has this conversation with Yuma. Am I saying her right name right? Yuma. And he's telling Yuma, listen, at least call Denise's pieces and let's see what's going on with her. Call her something. She's like, I ain't calling her. I'm not being bothered. But then he said, well, at least go over there or something. So when she does look into the situation, she realizes, he says, wait a second. I looked into this situation and... Um, you know what? She was beheaded and it does look phony. And so now she has a change of heart and now she's on his side. Now they want to play detectives or whatever. Now they want to try to solve this. And I'm like, this is not going to end well. You know, this is if there's a cover up in the White House and you work for the White House, stop trying to be the hero, especially when you were already warned by crazy Kyle. Why would you do this? I, I just don't get it. So, Kyle has already let uh, Donald know, and Donald was like, listen, you know what we got to do here. Handle this, but, you know, he said something like, handle this, but be respectful, whatever. But he was like, handle this. So, you know they're going to handle this. So, now the plan is for Uma to take herself on down to Denise's Pieces uh, shop and look around because Max has the keys to her shop. So she goes looking around, and I knew, I said, she's she about to get hurt. She's looking around, and she's looking, she don't see nothing, looking to find some evidence or something. And lo and behold, she opens that closet or whatever she opened, and you just see her get shot up. And Uma's down. Is Uma dead? I think so, but we don't know. we have to see next week. But she got shot up, and I was like, I told you, mind your business. Don't get in this. This is something too deep. This is this is just a little too much. You shouldn't have got into that. 
Um, what else happened? Let's talk about the first lady's children. All right, so that weirdo son, he was all excited about the whole drone incident and all that. And they had that whole funny thing about um, the president wishing that there was a drone strike to kill the first lady and all this <laughs> foolishness. But we see that um, Gail tells her brother she wants the password because she need, wants to use the internet. And he didn't give it to her, but she took the, his laptop anyway and discovered that he has a little mess on there, whatever. But the, it was he, he had it unlocked, so she was able to reach out to a lawyer. And remember, she wanted to be emancipated, so she sends an email or whatever to a lawyer. So then we see that the episode, we see that um, she has reached out to this lawyer. The lawyer gets it. His assistant brings it to him. It's like, you're not going to believe this, but look who wants to be emancipated. And he looks, and he's like, uh-huh. And she's like, no, look again. Really look. And he looks, and he sees that it is the first daughter. So he's like, wow. So, you know, the episode pretty much ends there, right? Or did it end with um, pretty much that's it. So she's going to go. The lawyer's going to reach out to her, so now there's going to be this big deal, this big controversy about how did this get out and, you know, what's going on here. And um, we got to find out who shot Uma. Is Uma dead? I think she is. We'll see. And also, did you notice that the first lady did not want um, Max to move that mattress and I'm not understanding why she doesn't want him to just get the mattress out of there. She tells him to leave it there. I don't understand why she just won't let him just take the mattress out so they could get this over with. There's something suspicious about that. And that was really crazy to me. Um, I think that's. I think I've covered everything. If there's anything I missed, you guys will let me know. But I just thought, you know, that was really crazy to me that she just won't let him move the mattress. And um, this whole thing, we're going to see how this whole thing plays out with Gail trying to be emancipated. Now, you know, now this puts a bad spotlight on the White House and how they're going to handle that. That's all I got from this episode. It was all right. It was decent. You know, we'll see next week what happens. Um, thank you for watching. If I forgot anything, let a brother know down below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And go look at my review of Greenleaf. Greenleaf just came back uh, this week. So check that out. You know, it came back on Tuesday. It was pretty good. Check that out. But that's all I got for you right now. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, if there's anything I missed, let me know down below. That's all I got for you. I will see you all in the next video. You all be blessed.